Hey what's up everyone and welcome to the fourth tutorial on this series now and what we're going to be seeing today is a logical flow in our program so do something if this condition is true and if it isn't do something else this is what we see here from the last program so if what the user wrote equals something we print your in and if it if what the user wrote didn't equal something we print your out so that's pretty simple in Java and the first keyword we want to use is the if keyword and so we write if and then a bracket so basically this is the form of the if statement and in between the, uh, the brackets so here we put the condition so basically if this condition inside the bracket is true we will execute something and if it's false we will do something else um, so the condition we were checking for here in our if statement was whether input name which is the variable uh, that got assigned a value and this value was what the user wrote equal something and as you may notice uh, there is a dot between the equals on input name that's because input name is a class is, is an object sorry not a class and so input name is an object of type string and now you may tell me but um, didn't you create new objects using the new keyword as we saw in lesson 2 well actually some methods can return a new objects in this case the read line method returns a new string object just as uh, just like making a new string read line eventually returns a new string to us and that's the value we assign to input name so input name is a string object and the equals method uh, is an ob is an, it's a method inside the string class um, so basically we're calling an equals method which is inside input name and it basically checks whether the string we pass to the equals method is equal to the value our object has this may sound a bit complicated but let me space out these brackets here for you to read it better so we see that equals has some brackets and between those brackets we've got a string and then we've got a dot before the equals meaning this string here is the parameter of the equals method and the equals method is going to affect this object here and basically if this object equals this string so input name equals something and then I'm going to just um, remove those spaces so if if this condition is true we're going to print your in and this else keyword basically means that if this condition was true the else part is executed and if it was false so let me explain this a bit better uh, if a user imp wrote something we print we're in uh, you are in and if it if he wrote something different we jump to the else part and we print you are out so basically this gets run if it's true the condition and this if the condition is false now um, you may think that well actually this uh, shorthand method to write the if statement only allows to uh, use one line uh, for the actually what we do if the condition is true so if this condition is true we're going to execute this part here yeah but imagine we wanted to execute multiple lines well that's something a bit different now because it we have to use curly braces again so we write the if statement so if bracket and then the condition then a curly brace and a closing brace and between those two braces we write whatever we want to do if the condition is true we can write multiple lines here something like that would be perfectly viable and now we can write the else here and we can also add multiple lines in the um, else part okay so there we go now let's run this baby and see what happens here we've got our program it asks me to enter my username so let me write hello and it says you're out and then bye okay so let me run this again it 
and let me say something. You're in, and hello. So as you may notice, um, writing the code between these curly braces allows for multiple lines of code to be executed if, if the condition is true. Now imagine, instead of username, we wrote rank. And we're going to say something if the rank is admin, and say something different if the rank is moderator, and finally uh, say something generic for all users. So if input name equals admin, let's print hello admin. Now how would we do to print something if the input name equals moderator and to print something generic if the input name doesn't equal admin or moderator? Well, you may think to write another if, if statement, but in fact, there's a shorthand method for that. Instead of if, 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 we can write if, and then else if, and we write exactly the same. So basically, up to here, we are going to do something different uh, than this condition was, and now we write another if statement, and uh, here we write input name, whoops, Oops, sorry about that. Equals moderator. And finally, after this, we can write the else. Here we write. Okay, so we've got if input name equals admin, we print hello admin, else if input name equals moderator, we print hello mod, and else we print hello user. So this is checking through two conditions, and if neither of those conditions were true, so if input name it was, it wasn't admin, and it wasn't moderator, so it wasn't any of the two, we print hello user. If it was admin, we print hello admin, and if it was moderator, we print hello mod. So let's try this out and see what happens. Use my program. Enter your rank. I'm going to say admin. Hello admin. There we go. Let's run this again and type something completely random. Like for example, uh, cow. Hello user. There we go. So this is something uh, really interesting in terms of then creating applications which will perform different functions depending on the user input or um, something like that on certain conditions something uh, for example um, if a certain item on a combo box was selected we do this and if another item was selected we do something different so this comes really handy uh, when we actually get into uh, programming uh, GUIs, so graphical user interfaces. This becomes really interesting uh, then. And so in the next lesson we're going to be seeing uh, uh, something a bit different to the if statement but that has more or less the same use which is called the switch statement. Um, and that's pretty interesting. Um, well I'm not going to tell you what it's about, <laughs> I'll tell you in the next lesson. Um, so that's pretty much it for this lesson. We've seen how to control our program using a logical flow using the if statement if else and if else if else at any given point in time we can completely delete the else if it's not necessary and we can of course delete the else if if it's not necessary so we can basically have the if alone so that's pretty much everything um, there is for this lesson and in the next lesson uh, we're going to be going through the switch statement so uh, stay tuned for the next lesson and remember to subscribe if you like the content you see here and keep programming and enjoying yourselves. See you on the next one.